Welcome back kiddos. Uh, before we begin today's discussion on rules for finding the proper number of sig figs in a calculation, I want to quickly clear up something that uh, I messed up on in the last video. It was this problem right here where I said that this number is equal to 1.368 times 10 to the fourth. Let's go ahead and erase that fourth power right there. It's not 10 to the fourth. Let's count over again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my bad. That should be 1.368 times 10 to the fifth kilograms. Doesn't change my answer. I still rounded it off to four digits. I just had the wrong power of 10 there. Uh, so I went ahead on the on the previous video and I went ahead and edited that. And I wanted to make sure as you watch this one that uh, that I made that clear again. So how do we um, find the proper number of significant figures when we actually do math? with these measurements. And so there are two rules we need to follow. One is for multiplying and dividing, and the other is for adding and subtracting. So we'll do the multiplication and division rule first. It's pretty simple. The number of significant figures in your answer when numbers are multiplied or divided is equal to the smallest number of sig figs in any one piece of data used. Now what does that mean, the smallest number of sig figs in any one piece of data used? Well, let's illustrate that by just doing a simple example. Let's say we have a room that has a length of 8.3 meters and a width of 4.83 meters. Now, we have two significant figures in my first measurement, two significant figures, so we estimated that three. We estimated that, in this case, to the nearest tenth. We don't know what comes after that three. That three is my estimate. However, in the width, we actually have three significant figures. That means we know this digit for sure, we know the tenths position for sure, and we estimated the hundredths. Now, when I multiply these two together, so let's do that, 8.3 meters times 4.83 meters, let's see what we end up getting here. Let's pull out my scientific calculator quickly. We have 8.3, scooch that over, times 4.83, and my calculator says 40.089, 40.089. So let's go ahead and write that down, 0.089. And my unit would be meters times meters, which of course is square meters or meters squared. Now, doesn't my answer end up having five significant figures? Can my answer be more accurate than the data that I use to arrive at that answer? No, the answer is obviously no, it can't be. So, since we're multiplying, the rule we'll use is the number of sig figs in my answer is equal to the smallest number of sig figs in any one piece of data used. So I have two significant figures in this piece of data, three significant figures in this piece of data, I need to go with two significant figures in my answer. So I count over two digits from the left. One, two. So I have to round right there. So many students would say, okay, Hummer, the answer is 40 square meters. And I have a problem with that because remember, can't we write this as four times 10 to the first? In other words, we can get rid of that zero. It's not necessary. It's not significant. So, in order to illustrate this properly with two significant figures, I'd have to say 4.0 times 10 to the first square meters. Now that's a lot of work to write the number 40 and illustrate to someone that it has two significant figures in it. So, we've compromised a little bit. If I put the number 40 with a decimal at the end of it, that means that that zero beside the decimal to the left is significant. So I could write it in one of two ways either 4.0 times 10 to the first square, square meters or 40 with a decimal square meters. Either one is fine. Both answers have two significant figures, but not 40. The number 40 without a decimal after that zero just has one sig fig. Okay, you try the next one. See what you get and then return to the video and see if your answer and work matches up with my answer and work. Okay, welcome back. So, you were to find the density of a metal object. The mass is 9.42 grams, and the volume is 1.2 cubic centimeters. Now, density is the mass of an object divided by its volume. 
So let's take 9.42 grams and we'll divide that by 1.2 cubic centimeters. Okay, so let's see. Let's pull out my calculator again, see what we get. So we have 9.42 divided by 1.2 cubic centimeters. My calculator says 7.85. 7.85. So 7.85, my unit would be grams over cubic centimeters, grams over cubic centimeters. Now, this answer has three significant figures in it, doesn't it? Well, can I have three significant figures in this answer? Can my answer be more accurate than the data that I was given? Well, let's see, my first piece of data, 9.42, has three significant figures in it. My second piece of data, 1.2, only has two significant figures in it. So I have to go with the piece of data that has the smallest number of significant figures. So I have to round my answer off to two sig figs. So 7.85 becomes 7.9 grams per cubic centimeter. Two sig figs in my answer. My data with the least number of sig figs had two sig figs in it. Okay. Now we're going to practice a bunch of these in class, so um, you'll get a chance to ask questions in class tomorrow. Alrighty? Now, what about adding and subtracting? Well, the rule's a little bit different. When numbers are added or subtracted, the number of digits in the answer depends upon the accuracy of the numbers used. Now, the accuracy of the numbers used simply means that I take the least accurate piece of data and round my answer off to that decimal place. So when I add or subtract, I look at the decimal place. And I want to use the measurement that has the fewest number of decimal places, and that's where I'd like to round my answer. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say we want to add 12.52 centimeters and 8 centimeters and 72.3 centimeters. Okay, now when I add these up, I'm going to get a 2, an 8, a 2, carry the 1, 7, 8, 92.82. And centimeter plus centimeter plus centimeter is simply centimeter still. So I end up with 92. 0.82 centimeters. Now, ask yourself, is my answer more accurate than my measured values? Well, once again, of course it is. In my first measurement, didn't I have um, my measurement to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter? In my second, though, I only knew it to the nearest whole centimeter. I had no idea what came after that eight. That could have been a one, it could have been a two, who knows? Maybe this was 7.9. I don't know what comes after that eight. And in my third measurement, I only knew it to the nearest tenth. I didn't know what came after that three. So which of these should I round it to? To the nearest hundredth, to the nearest whole number, or to the nearest tenth? Well, we have to go with the least accurate, which is to the nearest whole number. So I want to round this off to the nearest whole number. So 92.82 becomes 93 centimeters. That would be my answer. So you'll notice when I add, I don't look at the number of sig figs in my measurements, I look at the decimal place. So when you add, oftentimes you can even gain a significant figure. Notice this had four, this had one, this had three, your answer had two sig figs. Because once again, when we add or when we subtract, we look at the decimal place. We don't look at the number of sig figs. Okay, you try the second one on your own. Then come back and see how I did, how I did it, and compare our answers. Okay, here we go. Let's do the next one. 28.0 centimeters, so I know that to the nearest tenth. 23.538 centimeters, boy, I know that to the nearest thousandth. And 25.68 centimeters. All right, let's add these up. Centimeters plus centimeter plus centimeter is simply centimeter. This is an eight, this is an 11, carry the one, 
So two, carry the one, 12, 17, carry the one. Okay, if I did my math right, my calculator would say 77.218 centimeters. So let's go ahead. My answer is way more accurate than my least accurate piece of data. Don't you agree that this piece of data here is the least accurate? I only know it to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. This one I know to the thousandth, this one I know to the nearest hundredth. So that means I have to round my answer off to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So I make my decision here. So I'm going to round that off to 77.2 centimeters. Okay, once again, when we add or subtract, we do not look at sig figs, we look at decimal places. Okay, all right. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next page. Now, what we're going to start with in our next video is something called the SI system. This is the System International of Units, an international system of units that we use in science. That will be the topic of our next discussion. See you then. Bye-bye.